right friends welcome back to the first capsule this is national health policy 2017 this is divided into literally four parts the first part talks about salient features the second part talks about government's version government treats this as a four pillar mechanism third part talks about what are the present difficulties the last part talks about what are the challenges probably this will be sufficient to answer any question on national health policy previous national health policy pertains to 2002 and at that time it was decided that the total public health expenditure you may have a doubt what is meant by public health expenditure the expenditure spent by the union government as well as state governments put together that is calculated as percentage of gdp because for issues like health and education the responsibility of a state comes into picture that's why people talk about the percentage of public expenditure on important aspects like health like education like that and here let us come back to the discussion it was thought of improving or increasing the public expenditure on health to 2% by 2010 but we are now in 2017 at present also the expenditure is somewhere around 1.15% of gdp we could not achieve the figure of 2% by 2010 even in 2017 also we are languishing somewhere around 1.1% 1.15% something like that you may have a doubt if the public expenditure is not increased what will happen if the public expenditure is not increased people have to dependent on private hospitals and some of the private hospitals will definitely exploit when some disease strikes a young person then what happens his family will cripple because of huge out of pocket expenditure if someone is suffering from serious disease like heart disease then the medical treatment may cost lakhs of rupees and families will be impoverished and several families will be thrown below poverty line so to avoid all these things the government's expenditure on health needs increase right and we could not reach that 2% we reached just 1.15% and after a nudge by the supreme court the government came up with national health policy 2017 right so this nhp means national health policy right salient features i explain you some important aspects only remaining things you can go through this slide the first one is as i have already told you there is a need for increasing public expenditure government says that it will be increased to 2.5% of gdp by 2025 and to achieve that the budgets for health must be increased from 20 to 25% every year from now onwards right up to 2025 then another landmark thing is this health card all the families will get the health card and the electronic health record will be available when electronic health record is available it will be a landmark development because of the reason if one goes to any hospital that can easily be accessed but the biggest issue is privacy policy india should take the law for privacy as well as data protection so anyhow let us come back to the discussion this universal health card is the landmark decision as per the national health policy then free drugs diagnostics emergency and essential services will be given to all then another landmark decision is eliminating certain diseases prominent one is tuberculosis by 2025 but this may not be achieved because of the reason at present 
around 70,000 to 1 lakh people are affected because of multi-drug resistant TB as well as extremely drug resistant TB, right? Then other important aspect is safe water and sanitation to all by 2020. This may be difficult to achieve the other target pertaining to infant mortality rate to 28 from 41 within two years. Probably within two years it may be difficult. Then immunization of children in the age group of 12 to 23 months to reach 90% by 2025, probably it is possible. Then if you look at other aspects, it gives focus on preventive and promotive health care and reduce out-of-pocket expenditure by the households by 25% by 2025. In my opinion, it should be reduced further altogether. Out-of-pocket expenditure must be brought down substantially. Otherwise, several families may go into poverty trap. Then, utilization of public health facilities will be increased by 50%, which is possible if central government and state governments take the issue seriously. So, these are salient features. Then, before going ahead, all of us must have idea about neonatal mortality rate, that is, the death of a child during the first 28 days of life per thousand live births. Infant mortality is before reaching one year. Under five mortality is before reaching 5 years. Having known this, now the first part is over, that is salient features. Now let us look at government's statement. Government stated that there are four pillars in the national health policy. As per the government's version I am talking about, these are four pillars. Pillar number one is, the emphasis is to move away from sick care to wellness. Here, the basic shift is from selective primary health care services to comprehensive primary health care. So, selective primary health care to comprehensive primary health care, that means health will be looked at in totality or in the total perspective, not on the selective basis. Then, it will be moved from sick care to wellness. So, all the steps will be taken to promote preventive health care. If proper steps are taken, then diseases can be minimized. If suitable potable water is available, if sanitation facilities are improved, then what happens? The disease prevalence will be reduced. That is the meaning of moving away from sick care to wellness. Then, let us look at second pillar. Second pillar promises free drugs, diagnostics and essential emergency services and the goal is free access to universal, comprehensive, primary health care as I have already told you along with that free drugs, diagnostics. So, this is the second pillar and availability of 2000 beds per million population across all geographies irrespective of the state, irrespective of the areas, this will be ensured. And the most important second pillar is strengthening and designing the health systems with the free drugs, diagnostics, free access to universal, comprehensive primary health care. Right. What is third pillar? Third pillar is to maintain standards in the medical field, national health care standards organization will be developed. National Health Care Standards Organization will be developed to develop guidelines. Standards will be set. All have to follow those standards. This is the third pillar. Look at the fourth pillar. Technology will be used. Technology will be used to create medical records of each and every family and these medical records can be linked with Tertiary care institutions, you may have a doubt, what is meant by tertiary care? Tertiary care means super speciality hospitals, which take care of 
advanced diseases like heart problems kidney problems then liver problems some advanced disease then we are talking about some advanced disease like cancer then tertiary care institutions will come into picture primary health care when we are having some ordinary fever some cut is there we go to primary health care center then if some scanning is required then we go to the district hospital then if the disease is too severe and serious that is a tertiary care here medical records will be created for each and every individual by use of technology and these will be linked with the tertiary care institutions so that the shortage of super specialty hospitals will be addressed by linking district hospitals with the super specialty hospitals so technological intervention is the thought of as pillar number 4 right this is government's version now look at what are the major issues at present after looking at major issues let us go to challenges first and the foremost is poor quality of medical education steps to be taken to reform the medical education government is doing some steps in this direction here i have listed out capitation fee is to be banned and admission to medical colleges must be purely based on merit only then there is urgent need to reduce the cost of medical education in the country and increase access even in the rural hinterland first and the foremost issue in our country to be solved is poor quality of medical education and doctor to population ratio is at present one for every 1674 persons and world health organization guidelines says that there must be one doctor for every 1000 persons then if you look at the reform in medical education post graduation seats must be increased so the first and the foremost point is poor quality of medical education must be solved then second thing is high out of pocket expenditure please look into this points 4 to 7% of households fell below the poverty line during 10 years as a result of high out of pocket expenditure so in foreign countries let us take the uk there if some major disease happens then there is a mechanism to protect the persons from paying from the pocket like insurance or government intervention there are several mechanisms in various countries but in india what happens for majority of the diseases we go to the private hospitals and they charge exorbitantly there is no regulation and people are getting impoverished so the biggest issue at present is high out of pocket expenditure and india's out of pocket expenditure is around 70% and india needs to provide a higher level of allocation at the same time provide insurance cover to each and every citizen of the country as it was successfully done in some countries and please look into this national health accounts which were released for the year 2013 14 total health expenditure is 4 and of lakh crores 4 and of lakh crores is the total expenditure out of which capital expenditure current expenditure capital expenditure is for the creation of hospitals construction of assets so capital expenditure is not much but the current expenditure is 4.2 lakh crores out of which the household expenditure is 73% 73% came from the pockets that means around 3 lakh crores of rupees came from the pockets of the individuals in our country and if you leave the insurance payments it may be somewhere around 2.8 lakh crores of rupees that is the main thing which government is to address immediately if you dig further as i have already told you household health care expenditure is 73% and if we subtract expenditure through insurance the out of pocket expenditure is somewhere around 64% and in fact thailand brought almost 75% of the population under universal health care within just one year then please look into this out of rupees 10 spent on health rupees 4 goes towards some medicines 
it is pushing about 30 to 35 million people into poverty and the important aspect is most of the doctors do not prescribe generic medicines they prescribe branded medicines there is a nexus between pharmaceuticals doctors and corporate hospitals the immediate task is to break that then investments on preventive health care are abysmally low please invest in good quality of water good quality of sanitation so then ultimately the medical expenses from the people will be reduced then issue number three is poor quality of infrastructure in government hospitals the infrastructure is not up to the mark and if you look at the reality government hospitals are visited at present only by the people below the poverty line and below the middle class only below middle class and below poverty line people are using government general hospitals but most of the middle class and above middle class they are becoming impoverished by visiting private hospitals because they are charging exorbitant prices so the infrastructure is to be improved anyhow government is thinking of some standards organization that must be strengthened it should work with the true letter and spirit next one is no doctors in rural hospitals how to solve this problem though public health centers are available even in major villages but the biggest problem is non availability of doctors and essential drugs are also not available in some of the public health centers even for minor diseases and ailments people are going to nearby urban centers the cost of health expenditure is increasing the figures what we have seen just now are only official figures unofficial figures must be much much higher then tertiary care is available in metro cities only super speciality for cancer super speciality for liver diseases super speciality for kidney diseases these are available only in metro centers like delhi mumbai hyderabad chennai now the government's intention is to connect online with the medical record that has to be ensured immediately and this tertiary care in metros must be expanded to at least a district level then less number of post graduate seats and government is working in this direction it appears because recently government increased i think 4000 post graduate seats then nexus between corporate hospitals diagnostics and pharmaceutical companies this is to be broken immediately there is a nexus between corporate hospitals doctors prescribe unnecessary tests to increase the bill of diagnostics then they write several medicines they do not recommend generic medicines they prescribe high priced medicines so the nexus between corporate hospitals diagnostics and pharmaceutical companies is to be broken right then challenges so we have discussed what are the problems in our country now what are the challenges in implementing nhp 2017 challenge number 1 at present the public expenditure on health is 1.15% of gdp and to increase it to 2.5% of gdp by 2025 what is to be done is 25% in health expenditure every year to be increased whether the governments are ready to do it that is the million dollar question challenge number 2 this is the policy aims at reducing out of pocket expenditure by 25% from the current levels by the year 2025 but in my opinion it is not sufficient as several families are impoverished and out of pocket expenditure is the biggest problem the society is facing as on date and the need of the hour is to further reduce it with the state's intervention and with the intervention of insurance companies then the mechanism for reducing even to this 25% is to be devised in a time bound manner with year wise targets if it is not possible to reduce it further then challenge number 3 is capacity to use higher levels of public funding the government announced that spending will be increased to 2.5% of gdp by 2025 the role of the states is quite crucial 
so the states must use or you can say the states must utilize this money for the best use and a major capacity expansion is required and only 11.3% of registered allopathic doctors are working in public sector and in the rural areas. So, rural areas, doctors are to be increased and more health professionals must be deployed for primary care in rural areas. Then only infant mortality and maternal mortality, neonatal mortality can be reduced substantially. Then the fourth point is tie up with the private sector. In fact, at present, 60 to 70 percent of all outpatient care as well as inpatient treatments are provided by the private sector. But the important point here to note is several times common people are being exploited by these private hospitals. So, the need of the hour is exploitation is to be prevented. Most important aspect is to prevent exploitation by the private service providers. Contracting health services with the private sector for the people below the poverty line and the middle class will become inevitable because government may not be able to provide all the services required. But the important and interesting point to note is how to prevent exploitation by the private medical service providers. Then challenge number five is public funds misutilization with the state backed insurance. Then unethical hospitals may have easy backdoor access to public funds in the form of state backed insurance. Through insurance, there is every possibility unethical hospitals may misutilize that, may misutilize public funds. Hence, it must be made mandatory for all the health institutions to be accredited. That means to be authenticated or registered and to publish the approved cost of treatments. How much cost for each disease, each type of disease that must be standardized and this removes the existing asymmetry of information. Then ensuring essential medicines and diagnostic tests free to everyone in public institutions. So, to reduce out-of-pocket expenditure, it is essential to provide essential medicines and diagnostic tests in public institutions. Only strong willpower of the governments, both at the centre and the states, can only make it successful. Then the next challenge is ensuring quality in public hospitals. Already, the above middle class and upper class people, they deserted totally government hospitals as well as government schools in most of the locations in our country and the biggest challenge for the government is ensuring the quality in the public hospitals or government hospitals. Then access to safe water and sanitation for all by 2020 within three years, how the government will provide access to safe water and sanitation, it is not understood. And as per January 2016, Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation report, sanitation coverage was only 48% in our country and achieving 100% coverage within 3 years may be a Herculean task. Then the next challenge is reducing infant mortality rate to 28. At present, it is 41 and it took 10 years to reduce from 57 to 41 and to reduce it to 28 from the present level of 41 that means 13 points to be reduced in 2 years it is the real challenging task the last one is probably it is possible 90 percent immunization by 2025 at present as per national family health survey this is 62 percent children were immunized between 12 to 23 months old, 62 percent is at present immunization, it has to go to 90 percent and this appears to be possible, but the important aspect is with regard to the laggard states, they must be kept in mind so as to ensure uniform penetration across the country. Right friends, finally, overall the national health policy kept ambitious targets, but the real success lies in strengthening or upgrading public hospitals most important free diagnostics and medicines for the majority of the population and third important aspect is ensuring private hospitals not exploiting the common man 
and the next point is reducing out of pocket expenditures substantially only state government's cooperation along with the center's will power can make it a reality so with this final word let us conclude the first capsule of the week have a nice day thank you